Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 23rd, 2014, and let's get straight into the news tonight. Our top story, Obama on Iraq. There's no amount of American firepower that's going to be able to hold this country together. And the test now, not just for Mr. Maliki, but for uh, all the leadership in Iraq is, uh, are they able to set aside their uh, suspicions, uh, their uh, preferences uh, for the good of the whole? And we don't know. The one thing I do know is, is that if they fail to do that, then no amount of uh, uh, military action by the United States uh, can hold that country together. But as the editor of this piece points out, the idea is not to hold Iraq together, but rather to break it down into constituent components along religious and sectarian lines. And I could not agree more. But Obama isn't the only one talking about Iraq. Tony Blair is getting in on the action where he admits taking out Saddam is partly to blame for the crisis in Iraq. You know, who would have thunk it? And let's take a look at the article. Writing in the Financial Times today, Mr. Blair said, of course the Iraq of 2014 bears in part the imprint of the removal of Saddam Hussein 11 years ago. To say otherwise, as a recent editorial in this newspaper implies that I do, would be absurd. So the moral of this story is that if you're going to remove somebody from power, you have to know what you're going to replace that person with. Just like here in the States, I hear people talk about all the time, let's impeach Obama, let's impeach Obama. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea because, you know, you see the drones, you see the wiretapping, you see the uh, unaccountability for things like Benghazi and Fast and Furious, and not just Obama Bush. You have the Iraq War, which is our current topic right now. But if all you do is get rid of these guys, you just impeach them, and you don't change the power structure that allowed them to act those ways, then all you're going to do is replace them with somebody who's just as bad, if not worse. United Nations may soon be paying water bills in Detroit. WWJ, a news radio station in Detroit, reports the United Nations may be paying delinquent water bills in the former Motor City. According to the Water Department spokeswoman, Curtis Garner, nearly half of the residents of the bankrupt city cannot or do not pay their water bills. This has led activists to declare access to water a human right that should be guarded by the United Nations. Garner said that although she believes access to water is a God-given right, the fact remains that somebody has to pay. You know, somebody does have to pay those bills. And as the author of this piece points out, a large part of the problem in Detroit is the bankruptcy and paying for the city's bureaucracy, which includes pensions. So when you're in a city such as Detroit, which has been plagued by uh, many problems for many different years, I mean, is it so bad that you want to hand the keys of anything over to the United Nations? We've done the reports here at InfoWars talking about how the United Nations is negotiating with uh, the Alamo in San Antonio to become a UNESCO site. And do you really want a gun-grabbing organization like the United Nations, not to mention many other offenses, coming in and taking over anything? I mean, it, is it that bad? I know you guys have problems in Detroit, but is it that bad that you want to hand the keys over to the United Nations? Because when we're talking about this gun-grabbing issue, you remember Detroit is a place where the police say, come here at your own risk because they say they just flat out can't protect you. And most people say, well, that's a bad police department. I respect these guys for being honest. They say, we don't have the manpower, we don't have the whatever, the finances, the resources to protect you. You have to protect yourself. Because you remember earlier this year, we gave you the article about the single mother, or she was uh, single in the house at the time when these guys broke in and were trying to harm her. But she said, no, I'm gonna pull out my gun and I'm going to defend myself and my homestead against you three armed attackers. And she chased these guys off. And the police show up to say, hey, we think it's great that this lady defended her home from these armed attackers because we couldn't be there to protect her at that time. So Detroit, uh, it may be bad, but United Nations is not the way to go. And another way that it's not the way to go, we're talking from the United Nations to the United Kingdom, and they're beginning a beta test of a cashless society. A shopping street in Manchester has banned cash as part of an experiment to see if Brits will accept a cashless society while all London buses will stop accepting cash payments from next month onwards. The purpose behind the experiment, which will take place in South Manchester, is to test customer and business reaction to the idea, and they're being overseen by the credit card processor HandyPay. So if you enter this cashless society like they said they wanted in Louisiana, I believe back in 2011, they said, we don't even want you to pay in cash for garage sales, any type of secondhand purchase. I mean, do you really want big brother to be watching you all the time. And occasionally, yeah, I go on 
go online and order something, but by and large, I have to pay in cash. And even some people who I won't mention laugh at me for paying in cash, but I have no problem with it. I guess I'm like Catherine Albrecht, and I just enjoy having my personal privacy, not being tracked everywhere I go, not having every purchase that I make monitored. Uh, so if you use this, uh, this uh, microchip society where they track everything you do, they'll be able to track where you shop, who you hang around with, uh, where you go, what type of places and purchases that you are interacting with. So if you value your privacy, you can have credit cards or bitcoins or other things like that, but don't throw cash under the bus. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. The brainwashing media machine has been turned up on high, and it's time for humanity to double down on the true people's media and strike back against the tyrants that are destroying our civilization with their lies and fraud. We are the resistance. You are the resistance. You are the info war. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv.